Welcome to the review of Game of Thrones Episode 4, There Will Be Spoilers. But before we get to that, I didn't get a chance to review Episode 3, uh, The Long Night. And I thought it was an amazing episode until I really kind of started thinking about it. I mean, in the moment, the fights are happening, Arya comes in with the kill, and it's all freaking amazing, jumping up and screaming plenty of times. And then you start to think about it like, all right, Night King went out like a little wimp. Like, what is the whole purpose of him? What was his goal? Like, there are just so many unanswered questions. So I'm gonna do a quick, just, you know, rewrite of what I would have preferred to happen, what I think would have made more logical sense, and but still keeping on with the story. And first of all, the thing I feel like was most detrimental to that episode is that the characters had really, really heavy plot armor that was never been seen before in Game of Thrones before. And the characters just seemed to be like really stupid. Like their plans seemed dumb. They had no real strategy. It seemed like they were like, all right, just throw the Dorothraki out there and they'll go from there. All right, so the things I would have changed is that, first of all, they would have used the Dorothraki a lot better. Maybe they would have, you know, went around the whites as they came in. Uh, second of all, they would have come up with a contingency plan, knowing good and well that the Night King at any point in time could raise the dead. I feel like that contingency plan could have been small shards of dragon class, like tied to them, always pinching at them. So even if they're brought back, they get right back to the dead. Or that Bran has a plan that he can warg into, into the whites and kind of keep them down. Or at least warg into the ones that are most pertinent to the situation happening. Either one of these, I think, would be great story-wise. If you go with the dragon glass thing, there'll be that debate of, all right, we only have so much dragon glass. Do we use some to come up with a contingency plan that might not even be needed? Or do we use it all for weapons to fight against the Night King? If we use Bran as the warging the whites off, then it becomes this battle of will against the Night King versus the Three-Eyed Raven. And that's kind of been the battle this whole time. So in the scenario, pretty much everything goes the same way. Um, Sam has to go down the crypto because they know that the Nike might bring back to the dead these people and Sam can still be down there with Dragonglass, defend Gilly, defend everybody, and they would have prepared for it. And then also when John goes and fights the Night King, the Night King is like, all right, everybody come on up. You know, they would come up and they would immediately go down to the Night King surprise. And then John, the Night King will have this amazing one-on-one -on -one fight that really just epitomizes their whole struggle that they've had this whole entire time. And like this episode where they don't come into much contact with each other, but the Night King still gets the upper hand on John, ready to deliver that final deadly blow. Then just like the episode, Arya mother effing Stark comes out of nowhere and kills the Night King. And then everyone else dies just as they did. But that's not how the episode unfolded. I mean, it was still a decent episode. Just thought it wasn't that Game of thrones -ish. Would have expected a lot more deaths. All right, on to this episode. So what's happening at this episode is that they are mourning the loss of all their loved ones and family and friends. And I absolutely love this moment. I mean, you really get a sense of just what they've sacrificed for the greater good of not only themselves, but the whole world and how really no one's going to appreciate them for doing this. And they have to appreciate the death themselves. And they go back and they mourn and eventually they kind of start drinking a lot more because they all raise a glass to Gendry of Baratheon now because Daenerys has claimed him that because he is now a lord of Storm's End. And that's when the party starts to get going. I mean, everybody's drinking and stuff and having a good time. Um, eventually, you know, Jamie and and uh, Brienne hook up. And that was a fine moment. I could tell you to leave it, honestly. But I do think it's going to pay a huge dividends um, later on in the series. And later on, John finally kind of sits down and talks with Danny. Like, they're like about to hook up. And then John remembers, like, oh crap. Like, and Danny's all cool with it because she's a Targaryen. She's like, Psh, this isn't even the weirdest thing. Like, sure, you're my nephew, but you're not my brother. Like, and even that's fine. And John, he really wants to. But like I predicted before, them two are never having sets again. That ship has sailed. And then they start shifting their focus towards King's Landing and just what they need to do to take it. And they all disagree and everything. And Sansa's being Sansa. I think I'm the only one that really hates Sansa. You know, I, I know I'm not alone out there, but I, I really don't like Sansa. And then John like adamantly disagrees with Sansa about something. And pretty much Arya's like, hey, we need to talk. Fa family, family discussion time happening now. Family meeting. 
and they talk about it and John finally admits to them that he is not their brother. Although we don't see that moment, and I don't know why we don't see that moment, would have been a really good, heartfelt, surprising moment from them to be like, oh crap, you haven't been my brother this whole time? But we didn't. I don't know why they cut away from that, especially because they go ahead and tell everybody after this. Like, I really want to see how they're reacting to this news, just like everyone else reacts to the news. And of course, Sansa tells Tyrion because that's just how she is. And, you know, they kind of form a whole strategy. Danny heads back to Stormborn, but before that, Rhaegal is completely taken out by Euron Greyjoy, and they get in this huge freaking army fight. That's a ship, it's not an army. And Masanda gets taken, and Tyrion is trying to broker a truce between Daenerys and Cersei, but I don't know why Tyrion really thinks he can reach his sister on this. Like, he is underestimating just how terrible a person she truly is. And she takes advantage of this, and she has the mountain just straight up behead Masande, but not before she says Dracarys, which is kind of a battling cry for Daenerys to take them all out, kill them all, essentially, burn them all. All right, that's pretty much the episode. On to my top five moments. Number five is Tormund really just talking up John. I just love this moment because Tormund, first of all, is just freaking crazy. And he's just like, uh, just talking up John, like, oh, I saw you ride a dragon. Oh, and then, you know, they're like, yeah, we all saw him ride a dragon. No, I saw him ride a dragon. I'm pretty much talking about how John <laughs> John took a knife for him and how John is a king, how John is a rightful king. And I love this moment because Danny is watching and Danny feels really so alone. She doesn't have those followers like John has, which I think is, is great for her. She needs to be humbled, you know, a little bit more. Although if she's humbled too much, then she's going to be going full on Mad Queen. Number four is Sam saying goodbye and Torma saying goodbye to a certain extent. I do think this is the last we'll see of Sam, maybe until like an epilogue, you know, you know, years or months later after everything has settled down. So he really has no more role to play. So it's just really good to see them get that final moment. Him saying that if they have a son, they'll name the baby John, of course, after John. Although he doesn't need that name anymore. He's Aegon now. Uh, but that was a absolute great moment. Number three, even though it was sad to see it, was Rhaegal being shot out of the sky. And it's one of those like, real true uh vintage game of thrones moments like oh it's a nice nice moment regal's strong he seemed like he's healed up and everything and just like spear right through the freaking heart and right through the neck that dragon was gone it was done though i mean i just love that it really just turned the ties and really just add way more tension to the episode number two is masande getting killed i mean this moment is going to drive Daenerys completely dragon crap crazy. Sorry, I don't like to curse. Um, I just love how she is, she's not going out like a wimp. Like she's going out saying, you know, Jakaris. And you know, Grey Worm has to watch on. Grey Worm is seeming like he's about to just kill anybody and everybody. Like he's, he's no longer, I think, focused on really being uh, the head military guy for Daenerys. Like, he had plans with Masande. Like, you knew one of them was gonna die. One thing, don't make plans in Game of Thrones. That's probably why Arya's gonna live. Number one moment, absolutely love, is just really epitomizes Jon's just uh, le leadership skills and how he really is probably the most rightful one to rule, not only because of his namesake, but because he has those leadership qualities. And that's when he's given the speech about the Fallen. And, you know, he, He's just so respectful towards them, and he's so um, thankful for their sacrifice. And that's what a king should be, is king should be thankful of subjects, um, but also able to sacrifice himself. So I absolutely love that moment. John is, without a doubt, my favorite character. All right, on to my top five MVPs. Number five is Daenerys Targaryen. I think I'm really going to enjoy her character growth, whichever way it goes. Because like I said before, Daenerys is being challenged so many different which ways here. Like she doesn't have that support she has anymore. Her armies have been decimated. Her best friend was just killed. Her lover, who she thought she could, you know, depend on, even though he says he doesn't want the throne, he still has a better state to the throne than she does. 
And I, I'm just gonna really like seeing, you know, how she grows and how she adapts to this. Number four is Varys. Varys is looking out for the realm, whatever that means, like Tyrion asked him. And I like that he's kind of willing to talk about treason here. Like he's willing to put his life on the line and stand up to Daenerys and give her the best advice he can give. So cool for Varys. Number three is Cersei. Like I don't like Cersei at all. I think she is dumb most of the time, but she has been playing the best hand she can play given what her goals are. Her goals are just like, I'm gonna rule. I'm not gonna help you, I'm not gonna help you. I'm gonna bring in these people and I'm pretty much gonna hold my own people as hostages and make you kill them. Like I look good no matter what. She's playing the game fairly perfectly so far. Number two is John. Just those leadership skills are, are amazing. And he's just that character who's the reluctant king. Like he's not the reluctant hero, he's the reluctant king. Like he, he doesn't want any of it. He just wants to protect people. He just wants to do what's right. Number one, just like last week, when I didn't do this list, is mother effing Arya Stark. She understands John's point of view. Um, also, she has her own goals. Like she's going to King's Landing because Cersei is still on her list. Like her list still matters. And granted, I think everyone on her list but the Hound has either killed themselves or died in one way or another. Um, so I look forward to seeing her put a knife in some green eyes. <laughs> All right, so on to predictions. Speaking of that, you know, I do think it's going to come down to Arya being in King's Landing, possibly about to kill Cersei. I have a feeling that she won't kill her. Like, even though... You know, that's what Arya has been trained to be. She's been trained to be a killer this whole time. I think she's going to find herself to embrace being human again. All right, John, I do think John will take the Iron Throne. That being said, I don't think anyone's going to sit on the Iron Throne by the end of it. John, since John didn't have that full art conclusion with the Night King, there must be something more to him. So there's something more it must be him just taking complete ownership of being Aegon Targaryen, the rightful heir to the throne. And, you know, that's what he has to do. He has to accept that he is not a bastard. He has to accept that he has been ordained with this task of being the king, or at least being the ruler in one way or another. I know I didn't say it here, but I said it in my hiccup from How to Train Dragon vs. Thunder from the Dragon Prince that I think all three of these dragons are going to be killed and Game of Thrones is going to end in some type of democracy. Um, so that being said, I do think the last dragon, not Bruce Leroy, will be killed. And with that, though, I think Daenerys will eventually get pregnant, possibly with triplets. I don't know, because last season they brought up plenty of times that she couldn't get pregnant. And I think it's been a good amount of time since the last time her and John hooked up. And I could definitely see her being pregnant like she would lose that dragon but she would gain more also she would lose that you know that sense of you know lusting after the throne and then last prediction is bran bran even though he's not king's landing he must still be important because he did not get a final scene the same way sam did and the same way Tormund did and so bran is still relevant i think bran may still find that bran in him that still cares about what happens to his family like, something threatening is happening to someone. He's going to be watching from somewhere. And he's going to impact, you know, this, what happens in King's Landing somehow. Even though it's three out of Raven, you wouldn't think he would. But I still think there's a lot of Bran Stark in there. All right. Those are my thoughts. Please let me know what you think. Please comment. Please like. Please consider subscribing. Sincerely, thank you for watching. I'm out.